Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, and health freedom. And in that light, I'm always talking to entrepreneurs, people doing things on the cutting edge, recording those conversations, and sharing them with the world. So in that light, I have a entrepreneur, in the truest word, truest sense of the word, um, his name is uh, Jonathan McLernan, and he's actually gone through a lot of different life experiences uh, from eating, from uh, almost uh, nearly getting beaten, and uh, he's translated that into a business for both uh, weight loss and uh, uh, online businesses, automation, you name it. So he's a serial entrepreneur, and um, I'll let him talk about his background, and welcome to the show. So Jonathan, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Christopher, and uh, it's it's great to be here. Um, and and you're right, I've I've got kind of a crazy like varied background here. Um, but a lot of the work that I do now was catalyzed by a sort of a traumatic incident I went through when living in, in South Africa when I was attacked and and nearly beaten to death. And and um, that that sent me sort of on this journey that uh, I, you know, I was trying to figure out. Um, I, I so I became a binge eating food addict. That was my trauma coping mechanism. And I, of course, at the time, I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. I didn't I didn't have the level of understanding, but that's and I gained about 120 pounds in a six month span. Like it was, it was shocking. I had no idea because I used to be an athlete. And so I had no idea that this could even happen. And, and during people would wonder, well, didn't, weren't you aware that like this was taking place and that you were getting bigger and so on? And I was like, well, kind of yes and no, because it's, it sounds strange for somebody who hasn't experienced it, but there was a lot of dissociation and denial and, and uh, you know, I just have to get through this or whatever. Then I'll get back to what I was before. Like all these different stories that I was telling myself, sort of disregarding the train, like more than a train wreck. It was like a speeding freight train going off a cliff or something, you know, until, until I realized like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep living like this. And so um, that, that sort of started this uh, probably close to 10 year journey of trying to sort of find myself again and figure out like, you know, if, if like counting calories and, and macros and meal plans and, and weight training plans and things like that weren't solving my problem, what will? And uh, that's kind of what brought me to the, to, to the work that I do today. So interesting. Very, very interesting. So tell us um, more about, you know, what you do current day. Um, yeah. And uh, it's, I find it fascinating. Yeah. And, and just quickly, I wanted to just acknowledge i think it's really cool that you talk about freedom in four domains rather because a lot of people do talk about financial freedom but i love that it's locational freedom and health freedom and emotional freedom as well like i think it's it's so important because if we don't have our health like all the other freedoms don't really mean anything to us and so uh in a nutshell the, the two main things that i do well i do really three things one is i have a podcast it's called between the before and after and that's us talking about people's life stories about overcoming adversity so <laughs> that's probably my 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 passion project. It's not my primary means of income. Um, <laughs> secondly, I run freedom nutrition coaching. And the goal of that in a nutshell is to marry the, uh, the science of metabolism with the psychology of behavior change and the compassion of human connection. And that's, that's quite a challenge to try to put those three things together, but that's what ultimately creates transformational results in people's lives. And then thirdly, I realized that I can't, I can only help so many people in a one-to-one -one coaching capacity and so I, uh, but in 2020, I started mentoring other coaches as well and kind of showing them how they can build or transition an in-person practice into a virtual or an online practice. And, you know, for a long time, I was probably hesitant to throw my hat in the ring. I've been coaching online since 2015. So I've got a lot of experience in the space, but I was kind of hesitant to throw my hat in the ring. I think just because of the uh, kind of the type of reputation that the, the quote unquote guru industry kind of has. And so it's that part of it's largely been like quietly, just like by word of mouth, but, um, I, I really, really enjoy seeing someone take something they're very good at and, and watch that idea come into fruition and turn into like a functioning um, digital business. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And then, you know, we, you and me were talking, you know, backstage where you're actually um, especially post 2020 where you're helping um, entrepreneurs pivot into virtual and you mm, know, digital. Yeah. So tell us more about that. Yeah. The, and kind of the way that I approach building a business is it's kind of like building a house. It's really like, so the foundation, you have to have that. And the foundation is like, wh what do you offer and, and what do you offer in a unique way? So in a sense, those in sort of the health coaching space, they're going to, there's similar tools that we're offering people. So 
pardon me, what's really important is how we frame this for people and how we frame it uh, through our unique lens and create our unique message. And in the online space, um, I like to say that we either solve a very specific problem or we work with a very specific demographic. That's how we break through the noise because there's millions of coaches out there. There's like billions of pieces of content being published every day. To break through the noise, we have to have a unique message. That can be a real challenge for someone to find within themselves. And so I'm, I'm, if I could toot my own horn, I'm actually pretty good at helping somebody uncover their unique message. My, my mentorship clients call me the content whisperer. And uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoy that. But that's only the first part of it. The second part of it is, is what I call is like the frame of the house, the digital infrastructure. So how do you, you have this promise, I'm going to help this, you know, this group of people get from point A to point B and be compensated well for that. Well, how do you deliver on that promise? And that's where a lot of people falter is because they're so focused on making the sales and marketing their business, they forget like you also have to deliver effectively on your promise. And so how do you build that digital infrastructure? And then the third part of it is kind of like the interior designer, I call it the finishing touches. How do you craft a client experience? So yes, you need that digital infrastructure to support your business, but now you also have to create a client experience. What does it look like from the time that they're first aware that you exist to on the other side, paying you money and telling other people about what it is that you do. And then lastly, you have the housewarming party. So we don't just build this house and then, and then wait for people to show up and recognize that it's a new house. So we need to connect with people in our, in our pre-existing network and make them aware that this is what we do. And we want to do this in a way that's not spammy or anything like that. You know, I, uh, I, I can't think of how many people have just gotten like a copy and paste message out of the blue on like Facebook messenger or something that, that doesn't really work, but open the door to real conversations with people where they'll ask you about what it is that you do. And then you're open to sharing, you know? So that's kind of how I, I approach doing that. And there's, there's a lot of obviously nuance and detail in, in there, um, both under the operations side and the marketing side of things, but, uh, that's how I sort of tie it all together. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, I know, you know, especially business has really changed post uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. um, and I know you talk about building an online business from the ground up in 2021 and moving forward. Tell us more. Yeah. Well, I, I also thought, okay, if I'm going <clears> to, <throat> pardon me, if I'm going to teach people how to do this, I want to teach them how to do it in, in 20, 28 days or less. And so I, I wrote a book called the, an ebook called the uh, 28 day coach. It, it is available on Amazon, but uh, afterwards I'll give you a link where if you're, if your readers want to get a complimentary copy, I can, uh, uh, I can send you that link and we'll put that in the show notes. Um, but it, it's, I think one of the biggest challenges we have is how do we take an idea? I would love to do this thing with people and turn that into people are putting up their hand to pay me to help them solve this problem. Because we want to re remember that ultimately a business exists to solve a problem that people are willing to pay to have solved. And, and that's ultimately what we're trying to do. And Every business, regardless of what they are, is essentially doing that. We, we just have to think, what is the problem that they're solving? You know, Disney is solving people's like boredom and <laughs> desire for entertainment, for example. So we want to figure out, well, what, what is that? Um, because it's not enough to just have good intentions. Um, we have to understand from the perspective of somebody who would pay us money. Because we could think like, our idea is the greatest idea in the world. I have this great idea. Everyone's going to love it. Well, how do we know? We actually have to put it to the test. We have to put it out to people and see, is there any interest in this? And you kind of want to do that before you go through all the other steps of building and fleshing out. Like I, I've built all this stuff and it turns out nobody wants what I have to offer. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to make sure that you validate what you're offering first before you really, you, you know, you go all in on something like this. Yeah. Uh, and what about, especially for online coaches, organic marketing, um, mm. uh, tell us more. Well, what's really interesting is, is, not to say that um, paid traffic isn't valuable, but you really have to, uh, speaking of like validating your offering, you really have to test it through organic marketing first. And, and organic marketing has an interesting advantage over paid advertising. Paid advertising, you can reach a volume of people, and it, but it's a numbers game. The people that you're potentially reaching, there is no personal connection with, you know? And so there's no, there's not a lot of nurturing. It's just like, man, I hope, I hope I can create a, a headline that attracts people and, and sucks them into watching my little short video describing what I do and get them to maybe book a discovery call or something. But there really isn't a lot of rapport or personal connection, no like and trust built up. And so you, you simply have to get a, in front of like a huge volume of people to get enough people willing to click, sure, I'll check this out. And even then the quality of lead is relatively low. Uh, last I checked, the numbers are somewhere around uh, 150 to 200 people to get one person to potentially sign up. Like that's a pretty low conversion percentage. 
Now, organically, is it starts with obviously producing content, whether that's through podcast, a YouTube channel, Instagram channel, you know, making reels and things like that, um, and just sharing with people what it is that you do, and then potentially connecting with them through direct messaging. And of course, it's important to kind of do it in a non-spammy way. Nobody likes receiving a cold text message, but organic just means we're not paying anybody to do this. We're just producing content on the social channels we do best on and inviting people to communicate with us. And of course, in order to do that effectively, again, we have to have an attractive offer that people are kind of excited about. It feels unique and they're willing to part with money for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's so interesting. And then uh, how about systemizing and automation for? Yeah. And, and I'd like to differentiate between systemization and automation because I think still there probably exists this, this bit of a myth out there that like you build this online business and just kind of like runs itself and money rolls in. It's like the, the digital environment is constantly shifting and evolving. And so we have to continue to have a hand in the business that we run. Now, automation for me is removing the human element altogether. Systemization is letting technology do what technology does best, which frees us up to do the human component of the work that we do. And I think that's really, really important. I use systemization and technology to do all of the administrative tasks in my business. So I have more time to spend working in a human capacity with my clients because the internet is just a medium. Ultimately, you know, and, and, and just for context, you know, a couple of years back, I really tried to make a fairly automated business where clients had limited access to me. Well, it turns out they don't like that. <laughs> it doesn't like they really don't. They, they're in order, especially if you're working any sort of like coaching uh, or, or mentorship type capacity, there's such need for genuine human connection, especially post pandemic. There's a real hunger for that. And so we've seen this shift back to, okay, we have to figure out how to create scalability and we create scalability through systemization, but we can't lose the human connection in there. And so I try to be a very human, like online business as well. Interesting. Um, one thing that's talking about is um, the audience size. And uh, you, uh, do you need a big audience to be successful? No, that, that's quite a myth, actually. Um, now, I'm not going to say that having a big audience doesn't potentially help if you have significant reach. But when you're trying to nurture like a meaningful community of engaged people, if, let's say you have an audience of maybe 20,000 or 40,000 or something like that, which sounds like a great number. But in reality, could you ever like contact or communicate or be in touch with all of them? You just kind of have to put stuff out there and hope that somebody out there sees it and reaches out to you. If you know, and think about how long it would take somebody to serve 40,000 people. It would take potentially a lifetime in depending on the type of like coaching that you're doing unless you build a, like a, a large team. And so the idea that I have to have a big audience to succeed is a myth. You want to have an audience, but a small engaged audience, you can actually nurture a really engaged and connected um, community of people that feel a much deeper sense of connection than somebody with say a million followers in social media that has like no personal connection with any of their followers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and what do you, the other thing is this um, six figure goal? Why do you think this is overrated in business? <laughs> I, well, this is what a lot of people promise. Now that being said, I, I almost want to put this caveat in here because it seems like there's a bit of runaway inflation at the time of recording this. So I'm like, maybe six figures is going to be like the new forty thousand dollars a year by the time this hits the airwaves, you know? But but in, in reality, so um, of course, if you go to build an online business, what you're going to see is. Um, in the guru's face, people talking about either creating a six figure or a seven figure business. So just to clarify what we're talking about is a, is a business that does more than a hundred thousand in revenue is a six figure and a business that does more than a million dollars in revenue would be a seven figure business. But what's understood is what's known as utility of money. There's this idea that the more money I have, the happier I will be. And that's a myth. What we see is beyond about as I'm recording this anyways, is beyond about $80,000 a year, people's sort of happiness with increased income drops. Like it, there's a diminishing returns on it. And so, and what I found even in my own own businesses is when I was really pushing for like high, high, high income numbers, I was, I was not happy. I was stressed out. I was, I was burnt out. I was pushing way harder than I needed to. And truth is I didn't really want to manage a team. I just wanted to run a lifestyle business where I could make, make money, make ends meet, but I got the freedom to go have lunch with my wife and my little boy or you know, if I want to go for a walk or have a nap or go for a workout in the middle of the day, I can without feeling like, you know, everything's going to fall apart. And so, you know, to, to, and the average 
like coach and sort of the particularly I could speak maybe most accurately in the health coaching space makes between four and five grand a month, which is between 50 to 60 grand a year, give or take. That's, that's what the average coach is making. And so the, I think this mentorship industry would, would love to tell you that all these coaches are crushing it and having 20 K months and 30 K months and 50 K months and so on and so forth. And it's like, that's extremely rare. Actually. Uh, I've been in the mentorship industry for, for three years now. I've worked, I've also done some contract mentorship within a couple of the biggest mentorship coaching programs in the space. So I've seen behind the curtains. I know the, I know what people are actually doing and probably about 10%, if that, of people are really crushing it and, and probably about 80% are sort of getting mediocre results and 10% are, are, are just languishing in, in, in the background, you know, like mm -hmm. not everyone's crushing it, making, even making six figures. Like it's actually a challenge to make a go of that. Um, and so I think it's important that we be realistic about that. It's not impossible. And there's ways to get yourself into that 10%, but sometimes it's going to take longer than 12 weeks as well. Yeah. What do you see as the dark side of this mentorship guru industry? Uh, <laughs> I think there's a lot of what I would call like predatory sharks out there. So I'm also really well versed in sales calls, discovery calls, enrollment calls. That was one of my specializations within one mentorship company that I was working for was teaching people how to do enrollment calls and how to, you know, objection handle and so on and so forth. Um, I do a lot of work in and around mindset and as, as such, like a lot of people aren't aware of how enrollment calls work and they're structured in a certain way to elicit you, to move you into a certain emotional state, to elicit a certain emotional response from you to get you to buy. And a lot of mentorship companies, what they do is they focus on the numbers, like enrolling as many people as possible. And once you're in, it's like, yeah, that's it. Whether or not it's right for you, it's like too bad. We already got your money. So what are you going to do? And that happened to me back in 2019. I remember paying like 7,500 bucks to go into this program and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, they, I, they told me everything I wanted to hear, mm -hmm. how this was going to transform my business. I got inside the program and I was like, this isn't even for my type of business. This is absolutely the wrong fit. Yeah. I, you know, your sales guy was really good. And I believed him because I'm a trusting kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And all I've found is that, that like, this is nothing like I was promised. Yeah. And, and now I'm out all this money. And, and I had to finance it with debt at that point in time because I had a previous business failure in uh, mid-2018 that cost my life savings. I had to rebuild, like, not even from the ground up, but from, like, a very deep hole. Yeah. And so I'd taken a leap of faith spending this money to invest in this mentorship to find out it wasn't the right fit. And they were just like, too bad. You signed a contract, so mm. suck it. And I was yeah. like, that that really sucked. It left a bad taste in my mouth. And it was like, you know, I'm obviously just one person, but I'm like, I'm never going to do business again. If any with them, and if anybody asks me about them, yeah. you know, I'd, I, and I think probably for the right people, they're the good program, but if they were to have integrity, they would have, uh, cause I laid out a very clear case. It wasn't a matter of me, like not doing the work. I, I laid, I said, here's the things that my business does. Here's the things that your mentorship teaches. And the two don't match up. Mm. I, I made a very, cause I understand I'm in business. Like you can't just hand a refund out like candy to everyone who says, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I just had a, I just had a change of mind. Like, so I, I did, did my due diligence and laid out a very clear case for it. And I'm like, too bad. We don't, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And, and so that, that just really stung. And so there's a lot of, cause coaches are really heart centered people, like coaches, practitioners, therapists, and very heart centered, like people who want to serve others, which is beautiful. It's needed in this industry, but also what it means is, it's not so hard to be kind of manipulated unknowingly on an enrollment call for a lot of money only to find out after the fact that, well, you kind of got sucked into something that wasn't the right fit for you mm -hmm. because people might ask, okay, well, why, if you've worked for some of these big mentorship companies, why didn't you stay with them? And, yeah. and ultimately what it boils down to is I was watching people get enrolled in these programs and they're basically throwing me a hail Mary. Hey, can you save this person? They, mm -hmm. they, they, de they were desperate and they paid, they put this on their credit card and, and they're, they're now, 8k in debt or 10k in debt help save them and i'm like i can't i can't do that and it's not right you shouldn't have enrolled these people they weren't qualified properly like, i think it's so important in business that we recognize like in, in my nutrition coaching if somebody comes to me and they've got a medical disorder that is totally out of my scope of practice and they're mm -hmm. desperate for help and they're like i'll pay you whatever i still won't enroll them because i can't help them i'm not qualified to help them and it's so important. I, I, I'm passionate about this because I've been burned before and I've watched people be burned before. I, and I think it's wrong. Now, that's not to say, you know, there aren't good mentors out there. There are, mm. but it's, it can be hard to find them.
and you've yep. got to do your due diligence. You've got to be willing to stand up for yourself, even, even on these enrollment calls and really go with your gut and recognize when something feels slightly off, where it feels like they're just trying to hit a revenue target, as opposed to really, truly, genuinely serve you and help you. Because yep. when someone invests in mentorship, they're investing in it. And so any of my mentorship, I back with an ROI guarantee. I will work with you until you make that investment back. Mm -hmm. And that's my simple way of saying like, you know, I know we sign up for 12 weeks, but I recognize if in 12 weeks we haven't hit that revenue target, I'm going to keep working with you because that's why you signed up for me. And so I really feel like this industry badly needs integrity. Yeah. 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 Because the thing is with this guru thing, you don't, it's basically anybody can start a account and, you know, claim these things and yeah. show these fancy pictures. And, but, um, so there, you have to really have a, you have to have a really sen you know, strong sense of, you know, moral integrity and mm -hmm. really, uh, you know, help those that you can really help. But, you know, I turn away a lot of people cause I can't really help them. And, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, and then you need to, we need to speak up for, you know, the bad actors and the, you know, yeah. uh, the, the, you know, people in this industry that, you know, give it a bad name. So, um, great conversation. How, I know you, how can people follow you, um, yeah. you know, visit you, <laughs> um, contact you. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to check out what I, what I offer in terms of mentorship, uh, I'll go, we'll put the link in the show notes, but it's John McLernan, J O N M C L E R N O N.com. And that'll tell you all about the mentorship that I do, including pricing. So you already know before you jump on a discovery call with me, like what you're going to invest to work with me, yeah. you know, that way that, that takes all the tension away. If, if you, if you know what the investment is and you're like, all right, cool. I want to go for it. Sweet. Now we can just have a conversation. There's not this tension of like, oh, when they drop the price and, <laughs> and I would say it's extremely reasonable. I've chosen to do it this way because I'm not chasing huge, huge number of figures to, to brag about it on social media. I'm doing this to genuinely help the industry move forward. If you're interested in the nutrition coaching that I do, which I think is quite unique in this space, uh, freedomnutritioncoach.com. And of course, uh, if you want to hear some inspiring stories, life stories of people overcoming adversity in their life between the before and after is my podcast. So, Excellent. And for all of the listeners out there, Jonathan's links will be in the will be in the links and show notes um thanks so much be sure to check out him on his um uh, social media especially youtube and twitter tiktok linkedin and, and with that we'll call it a day and thanks so much for coming on to the podcast thank you it's been a pleasure